Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll show you how I painted these lovely yellow lemons on a branch. This is number four in my summer fruits and vegetables series which included an orange slice, carrots, and these garden fresh beets. I'll have the links to these other videos in the description so let's get started on these lemons. I did this painting on cold press paper. Cold press has a little bit more tooth to it than the hot press and it's really lovely for texture and wet and wet. And before I started I tested out some colors on some scratch, scrap piece of paper, scrap or scratch? I'll call it scrap. <laughs> scrap piece of watercolor paper just because it can be a little tricky especially getting the right yellows. I didn't want it to be too cool or too warm. I ended up opting to make a somewhat neutralized yellow using both my cool and my warm yellow. And then I did some warm for the shadows and uh, the deeper colors on the lemons. And for the leaves, I also did a couple different variations on green. Uh, some are a little bit more yellow, others are a little bit more blue. I'm using my primary palette with a few extra additional colors. My primary colors are the Daniel Smith introductory set, which includes a warm and cool version of each of the primaries, so red, yellow, and blue. And I also included a few extra colors that you just can't quite mix with those introductory colors, which are burnt sienna, opera pink, indigo, I believe, and perylene violet. So that just rounds out my minimum palette that I like to use for teaching my, uh, my courses for beginners. Um, I just find it really nice to be able to not have to worry about having to spend so much money on a bunch of different paints and then they don't look right because they don't blend well. So if you start learning with this minimum palette um, with high quality colors, it really helps take some of the pressure off and some of the confusion and overwhelm of having too many colors, especially when you're already trying to work with, um, you know, the managing the wet on wet and the lights and darks and the layers. I mean, there's a lot that goes into painting watercolor, as um, as you know, if you've done any of that, um, if you've given watercolors a try yet. If not, they're wonderful, um, but they're are a lot of things to pay attention to. Um, I can't get into all of that in this video. Uh, I do have other videos where I address different uh, aspects of watercolor painting and that's pretty much what my channel is about. So uh, you can click on any of my other videos and get more watercolor tips. Um, anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, but for these leaves, I like having some unique texture in the leaves. So uh, aside from having different shades of green, like yellowy green and bluey green, um, I'm just dropping them in wet on wet just for some color variation. And you can even add a little water drops or um, pretty much anything goes within each contained area. Just don't go too dark or thick because you can always glaze another layer over. Um, keep it kind of light, again painting wet into wet. Um, this little stem here on this leaf, I'm just painting on dry paper because I'm just doing a single tone and I don't need a large area to blend wet and wet. And I'm speeding up some of this footage just to show you how I approach painting these leaves. I kind of paint in, um, in multiples just because I've been doing it for a while and I'm, I'm used to monitoring the level of wetness of the leaves and it just helps the process go a little faster. If you want to slow down, you just do one leaf at a time until you're comfortable. But uh, I'm just showing you how I mix different colors and how each leaf is different with different um, concentrations of the cooler green and the warmer green, uh, the blues and the yellows. Um, I add a little bit to each leaf generally um, just to keep them consistent, but um, by no means are they all the same. That just adds some interest and uh, variety. Now 
on this leaf that's behind that one. I add more of a dark shadow because it's casting um, a shadow from the other one, so it just looks a little bit more realistic. And now to start on the lemons, I'm going to do one lemon at a time, and I'm just going to paint the lemon with pure water with a tiny touch of uh, yellow paint just so I can see where the water is on my paper. Um, trying to carefully go inside those edges of my pencil lines there. And I want to make it uniformly wet. Just carefully staying inside those edges. Now I'm dipping into my paint and I'm adding it onto that wet paper. I'm leaving a bit of a highlight, so I'm imagining that the light source is coming from sort of behind and from the right side. So you see that little empty area there on the right side of the lemon that I didn't add the paint to. And we're going to keep building up some different tones on this paper just to get some more uh, 3D effect, making it look more round. So we'll have more shadows and uh, some texture as well. But I'm just painting that base um, semi-neutralized lemon color. One of the reasons that I wet the entire lemon was because I did want that highlight to have a soft edge flowing into the color of the lemon. I didn't want like any really hard edges because it doesn't look very natural. However, if you have an area that's a little too wet, um, once you add your color, you'll see that the color starts to flow and fill into that area because it is wet and watercolor paint goes to where the water is. So in that case, you can just uh, use your clean damp brush. Uh, we call that a thirsty brush. You can use that to swipe across the edge of the surface to lift some of that pigment away. I repeated that with the rest of the lemons and then moved on to painting the leaves of the branch. So you can see I have a vein in the middle of the leaves and I'm doing what is um, called negative painting, which I'm basically painting around the vein uh, to create the look of the vein. Um, it just means you're, you're painting around the area, pretty much. Um, so the vein's gonna stay lighter and the leaf is gonna have um, more concentrated color from the middle and outwards. And I'm pretty much just using the same colors, um, maybe slightly ver different variations, but I'm not making it so thick that it completely obscures the layer beneath. It just adds another layer of, of depth and some complexity and overall just makes it look a little bit more rich. So this is how it's looking so far and now we'll go back to working on the lemons. So I'm using the same mixture of the yellow that I had mixed before. It's just less water, so it's more intense of a color. And I re-wet that lemon, so that whole lemon is wet again. And I'm just intensifying that color a bit. Uh, it's not quite as, I would say, runny as the first layer. So it's not filling into that highlight as much as before. Now for this shadow side, I mixed a brown using that same yellow and I believe it was a bit of perylene violet on my palette that I used as well. Perylene violet is a reddish, brownish, purplish color. It's really lovely, especially for mixing um, browns and other neutrals. Um, it's really tricky to paint the shadows on a lemon um, or anything yellow for that matter, um, whether you're going brown uh, or purple is the complementary so it's it's a, a pretty natural shadow color for a lemon um, you just have to be a little careful not to overdo it I tend to go a little um, intense with my color layers I actually like the more illustrative look um, 
of that darker color and the contrast um, but by no means do you have to go that dark um, and it does lighten a bit as well once it dries. Um, so with the branch I'm also using a brown color that I just mixed from the colors I already used a little of that perlene violet and some yellow. Basically a, a good way to use neutrals or browns in your paintings is just to mix the colors that you're already using. So I already had yellow and perylene violet on my palette from painting the lemons and I have a little bit of blue as well so you could mix that in for a darker brown color. It's just a nice way of maintaining color harmony in your paintings. Now this branch I'm also painting wet and wet. I really like how it creates a natural bark type, type texture um, and you can leave one side darker and one side with more of a highlight which is really nice. It's the it's the water on the paper is kind of helping do the work for you. I'm adding a little bit more of that dimpled texture and then blotting a bit of it out so it's not so intense to create some subtlety and that is my finished lemon branch painting. If you'd like to print and trace this design along with all the other projects in this series, just click the link in the description and I will email you a link to access them for free. I'm continuously adding to this line art library and you'll have access to all of them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more watercolor tutorials. Thank you again for joining me and I'll see you next time.